Welcome back, and you're still on to the polity. My name is Macaulay Honohashi. Let me just give you a rundown of some of the stories that made headlines in our news media. President Bola Tinubu has directed the formation of an interministerial committee to oversee the cholera emergency operations center being operated by the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC. This was made known yesterday by the Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Mohamed Ali Pate, after the Federal Executive Council meeting um, uh, chaired by the President at the State House in Abuja. The committee members listed included the Federal Minister of Health, Finance, Water Resources, Environment, Youth, Aviation and Education. According to him, the newly formed committee's efforts is in addition to state government's support towards ensuring that Nigeria makes progress in reducing open defecation as cholera requires a multi-sectoral approach. Party further disclosed that at the moment that one states have recorded 1,528 cases with 53 deaths. Now on the Nara. The Nara depreciated further at the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market on Tuesday amid the foreign exchange crisis in the country. The domestic currency lost 10 Nara against the US dollar in the official market to trade at 1,500 Nara per dollar compared with the preceding day's 1,490 Nara per dollar. It also lost against the British pound sterling by 19 Nara yesterday to sell for 1,890 Nara per dollar compared with Monday's closing price of 1,871.52 uh, Nara per dollar. The Nara depreciated against the Euro, shedding 15 Nara to sell for 1,598 Nara per dollar per, per, per Euro, bigger pardon, versus the um, 1,582.79 uh, Nara per Euro. It was exchanged the day before. However, the Nara gained 5 Nara against the American currency in the parallel market during the session to trade at 1,500 Nara per dollar. In contrast, to the previous day's value of 1,505 Naira per dollar, that is at the parallel market. The local currency is weakening, even as the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Governor Mr. Yemi Cardoso employed an optimistic tone regarding the domestic currency stability in an interview he granted. He expressed satisfaction with the progress made in curbing volatility and suggested the worst may be over for the Nigerian currency. Now to petroleum matters. On June 23rd, Dover Kumar Edwin, the Vice President of Oil and Gas at Angote Industries Limited, accused the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority of granting licenses indiscriminately for the importation of dirty diesel and aviation fuel. However, Abubo Okoha, the agency's executive director, refuted the statement when he spoke to journalists after a meeting with the with oil marketers and domestic refiners in Abuja on Tuesday. Okwa said the sulfur content in imported fuel in the present month is not above the lawful limit. He gave the statistics for June, stating that import has continued to go down from 200 parts per million of the average and now we have it below 50 ppm that is provided under the law. The agency insisted that it had adopted all the stipulated procedures required for the importation of refined petroleum products into Nigeria to halt the inflow of dirty fuels. And they are also taking steps to ensure the integrity of locally refined products. He said refined petroleum products with high sulfur contents were last imported in February, stressing that this had since been addressed by the regulator. Okoha assured Nigerians that it is taking its mandate seriously to guarantee that only quality petroleum products are supplied and consumed in Nigeria for the well-being of its citizens. There was at this point, uh, let me introduce my guest into this, in, in the studio, seated here with me is Ibrahim Garba, popularly referred to and known by associates as Iceman. <laughs> Garba, you are welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much for having me. Well, this is the polity. Viewers, <coughs> participate by yeah. calling the numbers that will soon be displayed on the screen so that you can make the program conversational. Yeah. Uh, let me kick start this conversation with the last report. 
Yes. Langote, the president of Langote uh, uh, group, mm. is a uh, official made you know damning revelation, mm. damning revelation, so to speak. Yes. Last week, that accusing uh, IOCs as international oil companies of sabotaging his efforts to make the products available. Langote that has access, unfettered access to Mr. President and anybody that matters in this country. For them to come out in the public domain to me that has come in, that kind of comments and with a rebuttal from the PPRA, what do you think is going on? Well, thank you very, very much once again. N let's look at it this way. Uh, Dangote is a name that resonates across the world. It's been in business, it's, it's been in commodity trade and all that. So the terrain is not new to Dangote. Now coming to oil and gas, uh, we know how difficult it was for him to set up the uh, Dangote refinery. In one of the occasions, one talking at the World Economic Forum uh, that took place somewhere last month or so in Kenya, yeah. he mentioned it that there are so many challenges that came with setting up the refinery, which is inclusive of this sabotaging by some international oil companies. Uh, we are talking about regulation, we are talking about international best practices, and we are talking about global pricing. You know, your pricing uh, as it is now is in Naira, if you are selling at home. Overseas, you are going to sell in dollar. So I think uh, if you look at the scenario, Dangote is championing a cause. He's confronting the oil majors. Okay. If you look at a company like Total, living in Nigeria, that means they met a stiff competition in Dangote. Mm. Uh, Dangote mm. refinery, uh, to me, is world class. So if you are competing with the global players as a new entrant, uh, you may meet this opposition, uh, especially in relation to pricing. Remember when you set up the refinery, there was this anticipation that uh, people will move away to CNG and other new development. But he never gave up. But he insisted that, yes, let us pl play according to the rules of the game. I have my pricing based on my productions, and I have the local content. I'm sourcing it locally, and I can source it overseas. And uh, there's a lot of groundbreaking experience for Dangote for what I've seen. But like you know, in businesses like this, you meet competitors. And when you meet competitors, everybody is trying to outsmart each other. What Dangote need now is the backing of Nigerians, mm. the backing of the federal government. It's not about uh, being uh, assessing Mr. President. Mr. President is at the top watching mm. from all angles. But again, in fairness to Dangote, we should give him that mandate to control the pricing at the local level and at the same time interface with the international. Because if you are loading vessels from outside the country to Nigeria, it's more expensive. Mm. But now we have it locally. It is cheaper for us to patronize, and uh, that is on one side. But if you look at it from the other perspective, for now he's enjoying that monopoly because Ware Refinery, Potako uh, Refinery, Kaduna Refinery, very soon they'll come on stream. Okay. So, and that will force you know petroleum products pricing to come down. Mm. And what NMPRD is talking about is uh, maybe I don't know how they are looking at it. But this is the time they work in synergy with the corporation, with NMPC, so that we can have appropriate pricing. This thing is affecting us locally. And if we don't support this man now, um, he may be operating at a loss, which will not be good for business. Uh, you earlier uh, talked about uh, Kenya and mm. you also um, uh, mentioned the fact that Total is leaving mm. the, the country. That reminds me of uh, of uh, the meeting of African CEOs mm. that was convened, and you know it took place in uh, Kigali last month, where the chairman, the global chairman of Total Energies, made a damning allegation against Nigeria <laughs> and its policies. He did mention that you know there is no there is no enabling environment for business to thrive in Nigeria because of policies inconsistency in policies you know shifting the goalposts for uh, for investors and would be in foreign investors he, uh, he also revealed that they are moving to to Angola mm. with a 20 billion dollars investment in oil and gas sector for him to to go to far away you know Kigali mm. 
during the meeting of African CEOs to make that kind of revelation? What does it portend? Macaulay, you know, I always know one thing. Nigeria is a big market. But you now have leadership crisis over the years because you are not interfacing with the players in the industry. <coughs> we have somebody who has been in mobile, Exxon Mobile for some time as president. He mm. knows the terrain. You have an intelligent president, a former accountant, a lawyer, and all. This man is skilled in business. Mm. So if there is a standard that was maintained over the years, remember some of these oil majors, they enjoy so much tax relief. Mm. And we give them unfettered access to market across the nation. Go to Total Filling Station, go to all these major players. Are they trading for the benefit of Nigerians? Are they buying our products? If they are buying are they, what they're importing to the country at what price? I said it some time ago that we are not intimidated by companies leaving the country. Mm -hmm. No, we cannot be intimidated. Nigeria is a huge market. And look at the way the global financial, you know, landscape is shifting right, right now. China, Russia, they are combining forces to force down the U.S. dollar in terms of international pricing. Mm -hmm. We should tell you what we want. You, you cannot come to my territory and, you know, give me terms and conditions. You operate based on my own terms. So if you look at what is happening, moving 20 billion, well, I don't see 20 billion as a threat to Nigeria mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, you know, our GDP. Mm -hmm. We have enough. And I should sound this as a warning to international players coming to, to trade with Nigeria. Nanda, we're looking for investors and all that. Yes, don't go through shortcuts. Go through the due process. Let us see where you are bringing to the table. Nigeria's is the biggest market in the whole African nation, number one, you understand. So whatever you are coming with, be transparent. Let us see it. Government is ready to give you the, you know, the opportunities to succeed. But whereas you were hanging out with some government officials to trade, at the end of the day, it's okay, this is uh, for you and your friends and cronies to manage and all that. You are changing the economy. So we have a system whereby I see a kind of reset. Nigeria is taking shape ever since Mr. President took that decision concerning subsidy removal. Bakoli, a lot of people got the signal that this man means business. Uh, yes, at this early stage, we're going to feel the pains. Mm. But I'm so confident, my mind keep telling me, keep believing that Nigeria will be better for it in the long run. You are familiar with the AKK project? Of course. Um, AKK is acronym for Ajakuta Ajakadua Kaduna, Kaduna Kano. Kano. Yes. Uh, it's a pipeline that will eventually uh, step up, you know, the, our revenue generation. Yes. How, how did you receive the news of AKK? Because there was so much fanfare about it. AKK, I think, started right from from our president. Uh, that was the dream project of late president Umam Yaradua. Musa Yaradua. Yes. And um, I'm happy it came to bed at last when Buhari came into power. Mm. And if you can see from what we read in the papers, NMPC told us it's almost 90% ready. Yes. Um, very soon it will be commissioned under this administration. Most of the industries in the north need access to, you know, diesel and all that. And if you look at the supply chain going through the land and all that, these are heavy, you know, heavy, uh, he, he, these are heavy duty, uh, 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 what do we call them? This, 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 this oil, <laughs> <laughs> they are heavy laden. So it's not normal, normal petrol. Diesel has, when you are lifting diesel, you know the capacity of the tonnage is higher than ordinary fuel. So laying this pipeline through Kaduna to Kano, we, this, way, we, this is where we have mm. the biggest industrial hub in the north. Most of the factories today, you know, you are familiar with Kaduna, they are shut down. The textile industry shut down, and so many companies like that shut down. Go to Kaduna, Kano, over 100 companies shut down because they don't have access to diesel and all that. And you need these things. Now, side by side with that is to complement the energy distribution, mm. the discourse. And why you are you cannot guarantee hundred percent access to electricity now you need something to supplement and when you have that 
is going to help you to balance your production. Mm. Most companies derive energy from diesel production. Even if we have uh, the cases of you know, solar panels and all that, but industrial machines need these things to power them at a certain extent. So I think if you look at the narrative of this government, the body language right from the time of Good Luck Jonathan, Buhari administration, they are more concerned about infrastructural development. Mm -hmm. And um, many Nigerians, well, we are feeling the pains, but we need to focus more on these initiatives of government. At the end of the day, like I keep saying to, to, to many Nigerians that most of my friends, I say, look, we should have faith and confidence in this administration. We have a government now, which is just uh, celebrating one year in office. Mm -hmm. What has it done? We have seen the template. We've seen the infrastructural development in the federal capital territory. We've seen other places. We've seen Borno State. We've seen so many states across this federation, even if they have issues with financing. But we are beginning to see some element of growth, like what Wale had said through the DMO. Almost 20 trillion raised to service the debt. So you can see government effort. Mm. All these things channeled towards complementary the rules of the federal government, agencies of government, the institutions should wake up. Mm. Because it's not about eye service. AKK alone will generate a lot of revenue for the government, generate manpower, industries will come on stream, and we're going to see more commodities in the market, and it's going to force down co the prices, and competition will be there, even if it's going to come you know, from the land borders and elsewhere. But so long as you have manpower, and you have products in the market. Mm. Nigerians who have, you know, that benefit of making choices okay. with the resources they have. Now, you talked about complementary, uh, complementary role by mm. institutions and Nigerians. Mm. Everybody must play a role, to, you know, by contributing his or own quarter from his own corner. Mm. And uh, Iceman, I know you as a uh, <laughs> member of the Advertisers Practitioner Council of Nigeria mm. and a public affairs analyst. In fact, you are everything because you can discuss, <laughs> you can say something about everything under the sun. Okay. Now, let's move into one key area that's happening. There is so much you know, celebration today because mm -hmm. NIP at Nigerian Institute of Public Relations mm -hmm. celebrated it's 60 a, years a of its formation, its anniversary. That is mm -hmm. Diamond Jubilee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Diamond mm -hmm. Jubilee. That's a Diamond Jubilee. Yeah, that's Diamond Jubilee, 60 years. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the relevance of NIPR mm -hmm. is very vital because it contributes in shaping mm -hmm. perception image mm. and uh, you know you know uh, what not uh, managing reputation, Manage, managing of, reputation. The, of, of institutions and even the country mm. what would you say about the journey so far by and perform what you know um sometimes back i will take you most people don't understand the power of uh, public relations you know and especially in government establishment and the private sector. Um, I've had hard calls to discuss with so many people. You and I, mm. what we're doing now is about public relations. Yeah. Um, I have uh, had time to query some, you know, politicians, you know, image makers, organizations, on conduct. Mm. Public relation is not a job. It's not about coming out to say you have done this, you have done that. It's a systematic plan. Mm. It has to be researched through. There should be feedback before exposure. I use the word exposure because when you, in advertising practice, for instance, um, whenever we say exposure, that product must have gone through different stages of vetting okay. before it's made known to the public. The same thing should happen to governance. And that is why you see we are having back and forth miscommunication in yeah. governance today. Yeah. It begins with the presidency when by Anonoga and uh, his friend uh, Ajuri saying on, the same, issue. on the same issue. Is there is what we call a coordinated approach. Mm. And mm. Makoni, let me tell you this thing. Whether you like it or not, if you have an organization without a PR manager managing both internal and external conflict. Mm. You are going to zero. Mm. Because these are people that have foresight. Mm. These are people that interface with the public. These are people you need to defend your policies when you are firing, mm. you know, wrong. So, for me, 
NIPR over the years have raised the alarm mm. concerning public issues, debates, and all that. Even if you are organizing an event, get in touch with your PR man. Let him help you plan it. All these things are talking about government policies. You need a PR team established for that. You don't move from the newsroom to the government house to serve as a spokesman of your governor or your president without going through exactly. the NIPR. Yeah, you're right. You don't do that don't do because that. NIPR will prepare you for the challenges ahead. The NIPR will guide you. The NIPR will tell you flashpoints. The NIPR will protect you, protect your organization. Because one, by definition, these are image makers. These are people that shape opinions. These are people that shape the economy. So being a PR man must be someone who is multifaceted. Uh, and in fact, you must be a linguist. Yeah. Because you, may be, you must be able to interpret clearly the intentions of the people, the economy, the economy, this way, wherever you serve. So me, it's a huge milestone. But again, I want to urge, mine is to appeal to the NIPR not to sit back and allow some of these issues to go the way they are. Because they are stakeholders in the Nigerian project. Mm. There's nothing stopping them from calling a jury and buy a nanoga. Yes, you guys are veterans, especially in interpretation. Mm. But when it comes to thy human interpersonal skills, look, you need a trained PR person. You need a trained PR person. No. Give him the job. He will not take mm. the shine of the job. All he does is you know, make notes. Can you help me do this? Can you help do that? Can you say this thing? Okay, if you are going out to respond, maybe an opposition. PDP members say, look, like Atiku used to fire them. Mm. If they provided the need for Atiku to come in. They provided for Peter Obi to come in. Because these are people that are skillful in punching holes in the administration. Tinubu cannot come to say, this is what I'm going to say. You have your handlers. Mm. But again, mm. that is why the pressure keep coming back to the presidency. They are doing a lot, but nobody is seeing it. But what else you have a PR certified personnel managing? Look, you'll be selling so day what you're saying is, is not just enough to be a seasoned or veteran journalist or a broadcaster to be an image maker. There are core values now. There are core standards. values now. There are standards mm. for practice now. It's not because you obtain PhD mm. or master's or whatever now. This is a, this is a, night, uh, it's a specialized institution. Come on. Yeah, we know what is there with you there. <laughs> <laughs> like that, <It's> specialized. <laughs> no, you have to, because whether you like it or not, these are people that shape the economy. Mm. Uh, that, that is why anytime there is an event concerning the NIPR, when you, when you attend, when they speak, you know it resonates, it goes across, and whereas you have marketing skills attached, you come, we become what we call marketing communication consultant. Mm. Okay, they are very rare to find. <laughs> On that note, we congratulate. Uh, <laughs> NIPR for attending 60 years. Yes. I'm also a member. Uh, by the way, <laughs> we're here discussing um, mm -hmm. the entire gamut of issues mm -hmm. in the political firmament of the country. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to Kano. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you can discuss everything because I know you so well. <laughs> Isn't that so? <laughs> Not everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, the debacle mm -hmm. in the leadership <coughs> in Kano. Yeah. How far so far? Um, it's something that I would like to say it has brought Kano to the limelight and is gradually affecting governance in Kano. Uh, it's to me too early for us to go into that mm. and um, I would like to hold the governor accountable for that because there are decisions you take at the right time. Mm. There are decisions if you are taking them just like I told you earlier on it has to be tested you know by professionals these things i want to do it it's not about saying me today rise up and say okay no step down in 48 hours this is no military barracks mm. only the military take that decision you give somebody timeline now look at the circumstances on both sides what led to sunisi's exit i always ask this question yes tenusi had a tango with the former governor ganduji there are a lot of back and forth Sonosi is very vo vocal, we know that. But again, if you are vocal, your conversation should be very constructive. It's not about listening your conversation with, you know, deceit, you know, attack, and all that. Okay, 
in my opinion, as an emir, why should I even say anything? Because I'm operating within a local domain. Mm. My local domain is I have a constituency to manage. It's just a small team. Kano is a small area you are managing. That alone is a lot of pressure for you. Have you performed your primary role as a traditional ruler? That is another challenge. But taking the step further, you are well read, you are well traveled. If your knowledge is required somewhere, you step down from that platform. You go into governance or you go into politics. Mm -hmm. Your voice can be heard. You can be a speaker. You can be a Senate president. president. You can even be a Senate because Sunusi is qualified to be in any leadership mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. But again, he managed it. They were, he right, let me take this caller. Sorry, hold that thought, All right. Yeah? All right. Hello, good afternoon. This is the polity. <coughs> yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the polity. Tell us your name and where you are calling from. My name is Mazu Crawford from Arochuku in Abia State. Mazu. Mazu from Arochuku. Thank you, Mazu. Okay. Yeah. Give us a comment. See, when we talk about Nigeria, 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 the politics in Nigeria is that many of our politicians are going into politics in Nigeria. Many of them don't have that spirit of sportsmanship. Okay. Sportsmanship in the sense that if you lose, you are set it in good faith. Yeah. But the question is that when Nigeria politicians lose anything, whether at local level or at high level, you see how we turn the whole politics into a safe, it's a sort of confusion and commotion. The area delays it. Now you ask yourself, why is it that when people go into politics, what they will tell the people during campaign is different from what they are doing? Now look at how the color is ravaging the country. Who are these people supposed to help? Is it the state government or the federal government or the local government? It is the politicians themselves. They know what they have to say. At least, if they go to their own constituency respectively and do the needful, make water available, go to schools where we have majority of these kids that support this thing, even market places, and help at least make water available, make sanitation available, all this uh, the, the, the data that is available. It will help solve it. But everybody see that coming to read their television and be talking their own address. Nothing is happening. Which is not heading. Honestly, I call the opposition, whether you are the National Assembly, Senator, House of Rep, House of Rep, or anything with you. Go back to your constituency and do the needful to help the society. To help your people. Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you, Mazi Okora. <laughs> Thank you, Mazi Okora, for calling me. He's a regular caller on so mm. many uh, national, tele news. national television. Mm. I know him so well. Uh, he has made salient points. He's heaping everything on the doorstep of the politicians. Okay, back to where we mm. stopped. You we, know? Are to, we are coming back to, we we are are going to the show. We are going okay, to discuss fine. cholera. Uh, you know, okay, let me summarize it this way. Um, having reached that level, academically and all that, I expect him to say, okay, this is how I want to come in. To play my role but at that time he was very vocal on national and international issues but in the wrong way mm. and under the wrong context you are dealing with politicians you are dealing with your employers so the best thing is you advise you tell them okay this is my piece of information i want to share with you but not to go into the public domain because if you go out you are going to fight them and they'll fight back mm, they'll fight so back. i think those incidences led to his exit and he was, I will use the word, disgracefully, disgracefully exited from, you know, from the throne, which we were not happy, being fans and all that. I mean, we were do by the Emir, and the new Emir came in at that time, the 15th, according to what we read. And um, this is a gentleman, very quiet, very friendly, organized, and we saw his uh, antecedent. He never, he never had issues with anybody. And as the result, the four other Emirates emerged as well. And if you go around, I went down to all these places, most of them, we see development springing up because they are now in first class, uh, you know, title. And this is development because in modern age, in modern science, you need to take development to the grassroots. Especially now that we're talking about local government autonomy, how do you interface with these people? Mm -hmm. We saw, especially Bichi, when you go there, Bichi is like a home, a, a big city, go to Kara, you go to Gaia, you know, these are places that government invested heavily in. Now, coming down to this time, and the governor saying, look, we must revert back to the status quo. We are going to fight the people that brought you to power. Mm. They didn't vote you in for you to return them back 
to what they had before. They have seen changes. Are you going to pull down these institutions? Are you going to sack these traditional title holders? You no, know, there's going to be chaos because there is a structure that is on ground. What I expected the, uh, His Excellency to have done is, okay, let me allow this thing to flow for the first time. Let me go for second time. Let me observe the ambience of the people. That is why you need a PR expert to cancel you. To cancel you. <laughs> the PR expert will say, okay, let me go to town, do my research. Your Excellency, this is what I found out. Objectively, if we have to take this decision, these are the implications, but you have to know it. These people can go to court. If they go to court, based on fundamental human rights, they will defeat us. And you spend longer time fighting this battle, you will not achieve anything in the office, mm -hmm. which is what we are seeing right now. So, I don't see it as a win-win situation, even if you send I mean, the Adobaro out of Kano today. Um, are you going to enjoy that governance? Are you going to enjoy the, you know, because the public personality, the, the public, uh, your public image matters mm -hmm. a lot. Now, if during the last uh, sala, uh, during procession, which saw what happened for the first time, we don't have Doba in Kano again. We didn't see that people, children, family members used to go out to, you know, wave to their emirs and all that. People in Kano miss that. It's torment. People are going through a lot. Then you are adding more pressure on the people. There, there we don't want... And there is tension. There is tension. And let me ask you, um, there is a school of thought that believe that um, what's going on in Kano on the part of the current governor mm. is that political whims and caprices, yes. political... A consideration has mm. subsumed mm -hmm. uh, rationality. No, it's true uh, because, uh, like I say, you don't. You have to be very careful when you are dining with politicians. You stay on your lane. Don't go mm. beyond that. So this crisis is just some, it's something that generated right from the time of. So so now some people say, okay, the way he came in, the same way. I mean, but no, the circumstances are different. They are quite different because this is a gentleman who is very respectful and the people within the domain if you see the crowd of supporters mm. for mm. I mean Adobari it is amazing and that also so if, are you going to split Kano into two parts and they have to be careful mm. because if the federal government who politically they're interested in Kano ahead of 2027 come in and they're already inside it's going to be very difficult for you know his excellency whom i know very well very gentleman a very fine young man about can be useful it's yes it's good but again he allowed this pressure too early and um how he's going to navigate his way out of it well let's see how it goes uh i want us to be circumspect because the case mm. is in court oh uh, yes so that will not be you know found mm. foul of contempt yes uh let me ask you a direct question if it sounds hypothetical <laughs> do you see 2027 playing out in all of this <laughs> whether i like it or <laughs> not when you see politicians involved i love politicians because when you are going left they are going right the politician they are not too emotional about anything mm. their focus is you know they know about the shelf life which is four years their focus is well i mean i'm on seat now mm. let me start campaigning and planning for the next election and all that so and if you are going to stand on their way, they will crush you. They will crush you. That is one. Then number two, who are the big battalions? The APC. Okay. The APC, they are the big battalions. Yes. They hold the whole suite. They have power, the center, and all that. So if by what happened in 2023, and they escaped by the whiskers, they wouldn't want a second. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to have a repeat. Mm. Kano, Lagos, Port Harcourt. These are deciders. <laughs> Ibadan, yeah. this uh, area, especially yeah. within the northwest zone, the three KK states, Kano, yes. Kaduna, Kasena. So if you lump it together, APC is interested. Mm. So if uh, Abba Kebi Yusuf, who is in NMPP, is not coming to APC, or maybe if there's an agreement between them, mm. okay, if you are going to support us, we will support you, okay, so this issue, if there's no agreement politically, I think uh, APC will do all it can to make sure Sunisi doesn't get that seat. Okay. Yes. So it's even beyond the court. What do they file? Mm. Fundamental human rights. And you know when rights and abuse. Yes. You know what inter the, how it interplays. So the court will interpret that thing. And that's why that judgment that was read at the court of appeal was people <laughs> say <laughs> it's very technical. <laughs> technical yeah. 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 And they say, and I w the chief justice was very smart. Yeah. I will not say this. I don't belong here, like Mr. President is exactly. saying. I don't. I don't. <laughs> 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 so, is it neither allow 
you know, the supremacy battle to move to the next stage, which mm. is the Supreme Court, the Supreme to decide. Court. Mm. And if it gets to the Supreme Court, you know, it takes time. It, takes it time. could take years. But again, that affects Tunisi because he doesn't have his staff of office right now. Yeah. And I mean, Ado Bayaro, since he has the backing of APC, by 2027, it's going to be a rollover and they'll take over. Uh, do you see, mm. you know, a president being set for the desecration of, because that's the fear of so many people, desec mm. desecration of our president? Mm. No, it, 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 I think it happened in Rivers. Now, over about 15 older traditional title holders lost their place in uh, Sokoto State recently. Yes. And some people say, you know, their loyalty is in question because their loyalty is to the Sultan of Sokoto. Uh, well, Sultan of Sokoto has been there as a national leader, as mm. a father, mm. you know, and you know how we hold him in higher yeah. esteem. I wouldn't want him to be a victim, victim. of these political miscalculations. Mm. No. We should allow our traditional institutions to be. The governors should be very, very careful so that they don't desecrate that because it's a status symbol for everybody in the north. The governors should be very, very careful in handling that because it could implode. You are there in the comfort zone in your office using riding powers. We have not finished dealing with insecurity, banditry, and all these things. You That's want right. to invent another problem, right. it will yeah. consume you. So we have to be very, very careful. There's no response from government official no um the vice president responded yes the vice president calling responded. for calm and stability yes. and vice president has been meticulous on that because uh, he's a product of that and this uh, what we need now macaulay mm. it's not about um you know attacking the traditional institutions yeah. what i want to see happen especially i want this case to be won by the federal government the local government autonomy exactly. whereas the local governments come into full force now they will whittle down some of these arguments if you are coming they say no we are happy with our domain mm. we are happy with the traditional institutions i think you are invading our territory unjustly yeah. in nigeria like i said we need a reset we should begin to lay good precedence for others uh, coming you know to follow we should not begin to abuse this relationship we should not abuse this opportunity which you have on the plateau of 25 years still counting we don't want to go back to the past we don't want to see what happened in other climes to happen in nigeria so um mine is an appeal mm -hmm. to the you know the governors <laughs> like you know they're under pressure now mm -hmm. on because of this minimum wage are you saying they can't pay the money so there is a lot going on within the polity that we need to be very careful we need to manage this thing there's tension, there's emotion, there's a lot of crisis in on ground. Mm. Which one are we going to face, my brother? Now, Asma, you have read my mind because <laughs> our next conversation is on minimum wage. Mm. And our viewers, our telephone line is on the screen. Please call in so that you can make your comments. Make the program participatory because it is your show. Let me ask you, mm. uh, minimum wage. Today, there are about three meetings going on. Tell me what you'll be hearing because labor is about meeting at about now mm. and I, well, I was also made to understand that government is also meeting what are we expecting no the federal government and major stakeholders are meeting on one side the tuc nlc they are meeting They're even meeting. as i suggested the members of the national assembly they deliberated on these issues and they felt maybe this thing should you know be extended but yeah. you know yesterday yes at the federal executive, executive council, council meeting yes the you know government stepped down deliberation on on the label and you know, there were nine items on the agenda yeah so to speak they stepped down only uh, discussion on label no um i think the bottom line what i'm looking at macaulay mm. i'm looking at the bigger picture um we should begin to think outside the box yeah uh, if government says we cannot afford more than 62,000 labor say we are negotiating 150 uh, me I want us to strike a balance let's say 104,000 that's your middle ground that's the middle ground let us strike this middle ground and um, the governors the subnationals should be able to step up what do I mean you should look inwards through your IGR and you should look inwards towards, you know, working with those that can deliver. Mm. 
Go to government establishment, Macaulay. Some people come to office 10 o'clock, go by, close by 2 o'clock. Yes. Go to local government areas in, this, in the country today. In fact, it's only on PD, you see them coming to office. It has become a tradition. And you see ghost workers everywhere, yeah. all because of political patronage. Mm -hmm. These are the things that pile up pressure on our budget. Now, if Labour say we want 104, give it to them go back to the trenches go back to drawing board what is my staff strength can i pay the salary let us begin what we call screening face-to-face yeah. -face screening that is on one side then let's look at your qualification years of service those that are supposed to retire let's retire them peacefully then on another angle which way what, so, what how can government subsidize some you know commodities like fertilizer for instance should be subsidized for workers you know electricity should be subsidized for workers you know welfare transport should be subsidized for workers when you do that there will be less pressure and at the end of the day you find out that even if you are paying you still have reserve because the same igr mechanism you have in place by that time you are going to up the ante mm. i'm going to market to look for money you say 104 okay labor let us work as a team I, this, are my, this is my budget, this is my salary, this is my overhead, but at the same time, I want to go into projects. You know, borrowing comes to mind once in a while, but you need to work with international partners based on what you have. Market your brand. Mm. Look at Lagos. Look at, go to Bongo State. Look at Abia. There are investors coming on a daily basis. Do you know that, Macaulay? <laughs> <laughs> maybe i don't know whether it has happened to you i have friends i you know they they told me their challenges because they are not on the same political platform with the governor you are bringing the investor they say no you don't belong to our party at the detriment of the detriment of the masses it happened to the current deputy senate president who went to town is a, a local governor around Cabo or so you know to build bridge but the government say no you are not you don't belong to our party <laughs> so you can't do so there is a lot of you know inter-party because if you do it you take the credit and the government say no we want to take the credit ready you see we play politics with all these issues but if government need to want to resolve these issues this will look beyond the minimum wage let us look at areas we can use to negotiate with labor there are even agitations for decentralized templates. That one is, support that. No, this is about restructuring. You restructure the template. Mm -hmm. And President Tinibu, I trust him, is going to do that. When you do that, Michael, I don't see any challenge. Mm -hmm. What I mean, I don't see any challenge is this is what labor wants. Okay, this is what I want to offer. If you want me to give you this, you have to give out this. Then you strike a balance. Mm. Within yourself, you know there are ghost workers. What did the head of service discover recently? Some people are working overseas collecting salary yes. fees. For Why? years. For years. Abuse. So there's a lot of abuse in the city. So it's beyond the, 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 the minimum wage. We should look beyond the minimum wage. Whatever labor is looking for, labor too should be considerate. Mm. Labor should be negotiating other things. Okay, if you say it says on 62, okay, every worker is entitled to 50% discount on CNG, 50% discount or 75% discount on fertilizer, discount on you know electricity bills, discounts on house rent. Who will subsidize that? Government. Okay, government should subsidize. Government should do that. It's a deal because in Abuja today, you know the rent. 2.5, 1.5, 3.5. 5 million. Some of them are living outside the, the metropolitan Abuja. So if you look at the cost of transportation, the cost of living, everything is on the increase. Go to other states of the Federation. Go to Ebony. Go to Anambra. Go to Kwara. Go to Kogi. Go to all these places. Everybody is filling their pants. Mm. The solutions lie within us. The governors can deliver. But within themselves, the Edo State Governor is paying 70,000 Naira. Lagos State is paying 75,000 Naira. And Kano is telling me 50,000 Naira. No, Kano should pay 75,000. Uh, Adamawa should pay 65. 
Borno will pay 72. Edo is already paying 70. Edo is paying 70. But some people attribute that to p political... Uh, no, it's not political. This, you see the IGR mm -hmm. and what is coming in. Cross River should pay 90. River State should pay 80. So if you look at all these things, it depends on your income, your influence. Governors should not stifle this negotiation. They should not be selfish. Otherwise, most of them will not come back in 2027 that is what they used to negotiate with them okay yes <laughs> of course it's business okay uh. well we was on this point we are going to take a short break when we return um uh, Gerber will still be in the studio with me to continue with the conversation our phone lines will remain open viewers please call in so that you can participate to make the program conversational it is your show my name is tema calling Unashi. we'll be with you when we return after the short break please stay with us to report only 40% of high-risk drug users in Nigeria currently receive needed care, highlighting the massive unmet need. To close this gap, the federal government said it is intensifying efforts to address funding gaps as well as partnering with law enforcement agencies at reducing substance abuse while ensuring a balanced public health approach. Consultations are ongoing. The Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Mohamed Ali Pate, represented by its Permanent Secretary, Daju Kacholom, at the commemoration of this year's World Drug Abuse Day in Abuja, revealed plans to engage communities, traditional and religious leaders to intensify more efforts on mental health and substance use prevention. Thus, the Ministry of Health, as part of the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, has commenced infrastructural upgrade of some federal tertiary hospitals. And these include our federal neuropsychiatric hospitals, our federal teaching hospitals, our specialty hospitals, and our federal medical centers to provide drug-related healthcare service delivery across the nation. Federal government subsidizes health. I'm sure we all know that. Like, they subsidize in education. They subsidize health. We have federal tertiary hospitals, teaching hospitals, medical centers, specialty hospitals, including the neuropsychiatric hospitals. And we have, and they are all mandated and designated to treat drug users, all federal tertiary hospitals. The representative of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, Odomelam Chile, attributed the high prevalence of drug abuse to factors such as poverty, unemployment, and porous borders, which contribute to the region's vulnerability to drug trafficking and abuse. He advocated for investments in education, job creation, and community development initiatives to empower individuals and communities against drug abuse. The regions, the regions, colors, borders, and proximity to major drug trafficking routes make it a vulnerable transit point for illicit substances. Recognizing the significance of prevention, the international community has designated June 46 as the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, investing in education, drug creation, and community development initiatives can empower individuals and communities to resist the horror of drugs. Investing in prevention is crucial to address the complex challenges of drug trafficking and abuse. The World Health Organization representative to Nigeria, Walter Kazadi Mulombo, called on the Nigerian government to improve access to prevention, early detection and treatment services for drug use disorders. The A could be associated with the HIV, it could be associated with hepatitis B or C. There is also survey evidence come out the prevalence, the prevalence globally as well as in Nigeria. So that is the area also we should look at. But we also acknowledge the effort of the government, that prevention effort has been done. So there is also evidence come out that the, the, in Nigeria, the, the uh, HIV situation in people using the drug also has been, the death has been declining, so their life expectancy has been longer. So that can also see that this is the, the product of the effort, collaborative effort, to prevent the, the and then minimize the harm. So then to mutual, with this occasion, we would like to call on the government to 
strengthen and improve access to drug use prevention, early time detection and treatment services for the drug use disorder. The federal government of Nigeria says through collaborative efforts between the government, NGOs, healthcare professionals and community groups, efforts will focus on increasing access to regulated substances for medical purposes while preventing diversions to illicit markets. You're welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is The Polity, a program that focuses on political um, events that are trending in Nigeria and other parts of the world. With me still in the studio is Ibrahim Garba, popularly known by associates and friends and family members as Mr. Iceman. <laughs> and uh, we're here discussing, uh, you know, taking a look at the entire gamut of the political firmament in Nigeria. And with that report I just finished, uh, Iceman, you saw that report on drug. Yes, last week, mm. the world celebrated World, world Drugs Day. Yes. And the chairman of um, NDLA, NDLA mm -hmm. Brigadier General Buba Marwa was, you know, appeared on major TV in networks in Nigeria to talk about the success story of what they've, they've, they've done in NDLA since he assumed uh, the leadership of that agency. Mm. Now, in spite of efforts to curb the menace of drug abuse and, you know, uh, uh, remove the country from being a transit of sorts. Mm. Drugs are being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, culprits are being arrested almost on a daily basis at some of our airports, particularly international airports. How do you feel about that trend? No, I think um, it boils down to the society we live today. Everybody, almost these young people want to get high and even politicians are involved, even those in the military are involved. So it's a big racket across the world. Very few uh, that see themselves as, um, not necessarily because uh, they want to get high, pressure, pressure, peer pressure and all that. And if you look at the track record of achievements under General Buba Marwa since assuming in office, uh, Nigerians for the first time see a man passionate not about the country itself but about changing the lifestyle of these people i had a cause to you know visit the office and inquire you know about the success recorded by uh, buba mara what is really the secret behind it i think if you go through this checklist the staff there's a lot of motivation yes. um you never find staff being wanting or on the ground of compromise mm. there's this national feeling patriotism that look we must uh, do the right thing most time if you travel to cities outside abuja or other places you see them in daily checkpoints when they look through your eyes they easily identify people so they are well trained and they are i think they're on insurance that is why they are fighting this mm. battle mm. and um what would you say is it is it yes 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 it's yes yes because um the seizures recorded ever since he came into power is very very monumental mm. however there are other challenges because we've seen even with it abuja if you go to um banex plaza area we see and all these places you see how people trading on all these things and there are smart people mm -hmm. i did a lot of research on that uh, macaulay Taxi drivers are involved, motorbikers are involved, mm -hmm. communities are involved. You know, at the airport, we have a port of visuals involved. So it's more like a cabal in the cartel they are running. But one thing clear is that this business you are doing, you are involving, is about human life. It's, you are destroying a, an entire generation because the moment you start it, you can't stop it. I was in a taxi one day, I'll give you an example. It's just a fallout dialogue between me and somebody in the taxi. We're just talking. He wa I was listening. Uh, if you want to get original stories, go through this well, person. Yeah, yeah, right. So mm. he said, Oga, do you know of somebody I, I know? One big Oga. He has two children. Uh, one is in UK, one is in Nigeria. Now, the one in UK, every month, his pocket money is about 40,000 pounds sterling. I said, well, do you say 4,000 or 40,000? I said, no, it, I, 40, I think it should be 4,000. He said, no, I'm telling you the truth. This is poor child. 
Now that's for the son. Then the daughter, every time is always in rehab. Exotic cars in the yeah, house. Yeah. Um, the mother, I think whether it's still around, I don't know, two kids, one, the dad and two daughters. They have a lot of money, and but they don't have peace of mind. Yeah. Now these kids are into drugs. And the daughter, uh, you find out even a dad going to rehab and coming back, they still the same old story. The, same the son, in fact, any time, in any occasion, the father did not send that money at the end of the month. It's like coming back home to ventilate his anger on the father. <laughs> so there's crisis. Abandoned school. Yes, these are the high. Mm. You know, these are the high point of this. That's to tell you how bad it is. And you ask me, mm. didn't this thing run through the family? Yes. It's about leadership. If as a father. I am involved in such and my children find out you can't stop them because they say that you did it before we saw it mm. and as you are getting older they will challenge you and that is why I experience is is that time is now to track it go to Kasana go to Kano go to other places about you and all this you see young people into drugs mm. some of these girls who see go out at night see them in their bags they go to parties they, they are into drugs they are destroying their lives and Apart from that, there is peer pressure, and people in the university introduce them to all these things. That's why I have lesbianism, mm -hmm. homosexuality, and all these things affect. And you know, traffickers, society. Nigerian traffickers are, can be very daring. In the midst of celebrating World Drugs Day last week, a truckload of cannabis <laughs> you know, was accosted by security agencies. And <laughs> it was the the, the 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 trafficker was paraded on uh, <laughs> you know, to newsmen and it was shown on television. You know this ones, you know, is acting on tip off mm. because by the time you are as you are involved in this, okay, let me move this consignment. But there's somebody patriotic. Yes, that thing, that arrest, that seizure, is to save lives. Mm. We have tramadol. We have codeine. They are coming into this country almost every month. But tracking them is usually difficult. But whereas NDLA capture, what happens to the corporates? We have so many cases in court. But Mara uh, one time celebrated about 85 convictions in the court. And the, uh, you know, the judges should help us mm. in this convention. Because if you delay the execution, it still come back to us to hunt us. So, well, and... Um, the Ministry of Health has a lot to do to support mm. because we should. There's one thing I want us to do now going forward open campaign. You know, it's not about fighting again, it's about sensitization. When you see maybe uh, an image on B boards, mm. roadside, on television, online, telling you about just like you see on C group as that 18 years plus. Or these smokers are liable to die young, which NDLA, Ministry of Health, should collaborate to begin massive sensitization in Nigerian languages, mm. especially Hausa, Yoruba, Ibo, in locations where you record a high percentage of users. So when you release this information, they are seeing it, it sends the message back to them. To resonate with them. So when you that's why i say massive sensitization massive because you continue to arrest on a daily basis they are getting used to it but that those that are about to come in when they see this sign naturally you is communicate with it resonates with you that look they they say these smokers are liable to die they use the word die young mm. so if you are smoking you know you're on a timeline okay so if we, if we have that synergy yes between the ndle ministry of health is going to help in a long way in minimizing not you know stopping it minimizing because it's not easy to it's stop not it. easy to stop yes okay so people are calling for death penalty for drug <laughs> traffickers what do you think for the drug traffickers i support that in fact yes, it should be legislated Okay. Yes, at the National Assembly. But would, do they have the guts to do that? But states are legislating. Some states are doing that now. Mm. They should be gazetted in our constitution that all corporates, if found guilty, go to China and try it. Okay. It's debt direct. You know? So for now, our laws are so flexible, and that's why people continue to tangle with our judges and all that, using money. 
okay. to buy justice. Now, uh, moving on, mm. let's talk about something mm. and um, something that has become an epidemic that is cholera outbreak across wow. the country. It has ravaged 31, you know, states. Wow. Uh, you know, and um, we have recorded 1,528 cases with 53 deaths. Hmm. Hmm. It is alarming. It is alarming. Don't you think so? It is very alarming. Coming after COVID. Mm, coming after COVID. Okay. Not know, too long ago, ago. I think it started in Lagos. It started in Lagos. spreading some other cases. You know, you know the story is that the, it, it started rearing its head. Yes. At about January mm. this year. Mm. So, till now. And it is, you know, spreading like wildfire. How did you receive the message that cholera is ravaging Nigeria? Did you feel alarmed? The matter when it started in lagos you know my position is the lagos state government should declare state of emergency on that particular issue before it gets spread to other places mm. that is one then number two there should be you know immediate response at that early stage whereby drugs should be provided and all that then what are the causes mostly through pipe bomb water and all that these trends must begin to you know government should begin to prioritize its attention towards you know combating them at that early stage but whereas to see government ignore it and say okay um uh, let's see how it goes it spreads now you mentioned it's almost in 31 states mm. i didn't see that report but it's shocking to me it's very yeah, out of 37. No, uh, honestly, when I heard you pronounce it, it's very alarming and shocking. Uh, just like the time of COVID, yes. this is a huge, very, very huge challenge for federal government of Nigeria. It's beyond the state because this is something that is expensive to maintain, to treat and all that. So at this point, government, especially the Federal Ministry of Health, through the Minister Dr. Party, whom I know, is not resting on the soil mm. to make sure that this thing, this scourge is minimized. Should deploy personnel to site before it spread further than that. Because now it's like the COVID. Mm. By the time it infiltrates different families, it spread like Wi-Fi mm. and the, the cholera uh, uh, issue. And at the same time, medical doctors should be well equipped. Our laboratories should be well equipped so that as soon as there is early detection the next thing is to deal with the issue right there and then to minimize it otherwise like you rightly say there's poverty people yes. are looking for alternatives you know how many people can afford table water today mm -hmm. even the such a water even to boil water even you to need so yeah. you need electricity yeah. so we are handicapped mm -hmm. government should you know we are appealing you know there was even an attempt to trivialize uh, the 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 spread of the because the it's force. been long so when we said it was caused <laughs> by Zobo, <laughs> or, was it, uh, or wh whatever whatever it is you, you see it's a processing issue that you use water to process all these things now if you are using water to process uh how clean is this water from the source and uh, how hygienic mm. because they don't go through the temperature uh, temperate uh, you know uh, stages of maybe 100 percent degrees of boiling before use even if at that level there are microorganisms that can survive that heat so i think uh, like i said what in an emergency like that the ministry of health should begin with one sensitization mobilization and at the same time declaring a state of emergency on the uh, you know sector because if we don't treat that now couple with poverty we are going to record more dates now uh, let me ask you Iceman. many countries have conquered the issue of open defecation mm. you talked about sensitization mm. in a country where we don't have public toilets right here in mm. the federal capital you know and i know mm. people defecate even close to the, the seat of government mm. and the ranks are here yeah which will also exacerbate these uh you know outbreak mm. Mm. That's within the urban center. Urban We're center. talking about Abuja, not even the rural areas. How do you really react to that? Macaulay, do you know the Nigeria we have today? We have deficiency in so many areas. Yes. And there are things that we always 
tend to overlook mm -hmm. as if it's not important. Some of those issues you are raising now, how many people, how many medium are talking about that? Yeah, right. We focus so much on labor issues, focus <laughs> so much on the economy, we focus so much on international trade, focus so much on things that are not germane. Mm. Let's look at ourselves, the daily lifestyle. What you mentioned, these are things we see on a daily basis. Yes, right. In the federal capital territory, Sorry. you have visitors coming into the country. At the seat of power, I've seen all these things. You are seeing, you know, tricycle riders, you know, Okada riders, you know, you are arresting motorcycle operators that are trying to survive every day on a daily basis, mm. which I have oftentimes spoken on this issue that mm. don't arrest these young people mm. because they came out, they were chased out of their communities yeah, yeah. by bandits, mm. so they are trying to survive. Doing that, you are sending them back to where they, be, they shouldn't go. Mm they'll come back to haunt you or if they're really here they'll become criminals on monday we we're also we attended the press conference uh, organized by the sorry i'm digressing mm, you go ahead. by the fct command of the nigerian police go and see the young people that were arrested as you know the, you know who, 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 who uh, an allegation of uh, you know killing of that general yes exactly young people very people, vibrant, very vibrant. Mm. look I almost shed tears. I say these are Nigerians. What is happening to our system? There's a collapse. We need to build mm -hmm. a new ecosystem that will accommodate these young people. I think they need mentoring. I think about three of them live, you know, in, they, in, within, in a shanty. In a shanty. In a within, shanty. Within, the, within the city. Uh, yes. But up or about. Now, if you look at Didi and all these mm -hmm. places, they are trying to survive. No jobs. Now, whereas there's no job, no support system, nothing on ground to no, soak no, no safety net. No mm -hmm. safety net. So what are they what are they going to fall back on? And these are people that easily they can be convinced. And from what I read, what I saw rather, the gang master, the gang leader ran away because an expert he pulled them in a circle, go and help yeah. me or let me invade this apartment. Mm. And the guy that stabbed him was arrested. The guy that brought him on board was arrested. Was arrested. But the gang leader ran away. This is a collapse. So, so all these are fallout of a decay mm. we have in our society. And that is why it's not about what we are talking about right now. Mm. It's about having a strategy plan to accommodate every sector of the economy. But again, my appeal is this. The humanitarian ministry is as good as dead because the former minister was removed. Mm. Well, if they are going to bring her back, I don't know. Government should activate that office. That is one. Secondly, the governors should please allow local government to thrive. And you're raising your voice because of that, with emphasis. I'm angry. Yeah, you're angry. Nigerians are angry. It's visible on your face. Look, let these people come to be. What, what do, why do they establish an NFIU? The executive order 10 was signed by Mr. President, former President Buhari. Let us give them. It was spelled out clearly. Mm -hmm. Local government, if we go by what was on ground, no local government chairman is entitled to spend more than 500000 in a day mm -hmm. on welfare. So you have money to tell with, but you cannot assess more than that. Mm -hmm. If you are going to do, give us reason. All the local government, 774, give them their money. These young people you see, they will not come into the city to disturb you because they can always go back to their chairman. Yen Labe, uh -huh, I have come to see you. Uh, support also my family. No, go to school. Mm. The local government chairman can sponsor these young people. It's not the, the job of the governor to say, okay, I'm sponsoring 1,000 people to UK. Uh, is it your money? Allow these people to take the credit. So if you allow this spread, the emergence of the local government. I'm a fan of that. Because I remember between two, 1999 to 2003, supervisory councillors were riding big cars. Yeah. They're enjoying life. At the same time, they're closer to the... In fact, the chairman were living freely. Because when you come, they say, go and meet your councillor. So, why have we lost the rhythm? Obasan just gave us a very good template to work with. Give respect to him. But, Macaulay, if we don't go back to that, and I want, I insist, Nigerians must reject the the the, the, the so-called governance governance dominance. 
Well, the Attorney General of the Federation has instituted a case. Yes. Against the 36. Uh, and Nigerians, what, what, what is Labour doing? We are talking of minimum wage. These are the real issues. Mm. All we have now is Abuja Labour Congress. Mm. It's not national. If it's national, we have issues on our hands. We are talking about money. We are talking about welfare. We are talking about local government. We are talking about infrastructure. There's no infrastructure. Go. Look, Macaulay, I challenge you to go to places now. Mm. I do. Go and see whether... In fact, there was one local government I visited sometimes in Kano. If I mention the name, they will say it's blackmail. No, really? I went. That's why we're here. You see, I went around. Look, I'm an adventurist. Mm. Beyond media, I go on adventure. I want to see it and report it. Uh, the, I'll give credit to this man in the National Assembly, Honorable Kao Sumela, who did a comprehensive report mm. on local government administration. Some of the schools that were run aground. It started from Ganduji's administration. I will, I will hold him responsible for that as well. But he didn't do well to support. Mm. Most of these classes, I don't want to swear I'm a Muslim. I'll tell you, mm. some students, most of them, majority of them, don't even have seats. Some of them, they even send me pictures. Some of the ceilings are down. Some of the roofs are down. Anytime it rains, nobody comes to class. Mm. And it's happened at that. And guess what? Their parents want these children to go to school. That is on one side. What about the teachers? Mm. Most of the teachers, they, they are not qualified. Core members cannot go to teach because of their safety. Come on, we have mm. a system breakdown. We are not talking about dollars and pounds selling and all that. You see, government, the federal government has a lot on its hands. Yes. The state government should place pity Nigerians going back to the local government system and those in the National Assembly should support the local government initiatives. In fact, they shouldn't win that case in the courts or Nigerians will revolt. Enough of that. And lastly, um, the so-called State Electoral Commission should be totally wiped off from our constitution. We don't need that. What we want, I next should be unbundled in three parts so that I next should be given that role again to conduct local government elections. I next, is it, is it, you know, every time we have national elections, I next come up, no. It's a transition now from the federal elections, national elections, then you go to states, you, you go to the local government elections immediately. Maybe after three months, you go into local government elections. We have institutions in place. All this regional sentiment you are talking about will be gone. All this, is, so that is what we are talking about. The restructuring should be total. We shouldn't leave anything to spare. And we have, you see, I'm in love with this man, Mr. President Tinibu. Mm. He's very quiet, he's articulate, he's focused, he's, he never sleeps. He wants to achieve. Mm. And uh, he dared them almost on a daily basis that I'm going to fight you. Let him fight them. Nigerians are supporting him. Now let's talk about Tinubu and uh, national lawmakers. Recently, 50 lawmakers uh, made a presentation to the president for the unconditional release of Nandi Kanu, the supposed leader of IPOP, believing that doing so will lower tension and bring an end to the crisis that has de bedeviled the Northeast, what do you think? Uh, before this time, there was an option for already which his lawyer proposed to the federal government. To settle out of court. You know, they want out of court settlement. It's beyond mm. out of court settlement. Mm. Um, somebody must be used as a scapegoat. These are treasonable charges which you cannot sweep under the carpet. Mm. Uh, in Namdekanu, was it childishness? Or was it sabotage? Or was this was he power drawn? Who is he from nowhere? He just come and said, "Okay, you are the lord of everybody." He's a threat to people in the southeast mm -hmm. as I'm talking to you. So, I uh, I will hold the governors in the southeast responsible for the plight of Namdi Kanu. Let them come out with one voice to condemn what he has done in the first place. That is number one. As I'm talking to you, there's still Monday sit at home in the southeast. That's embarrassing. Mm. It shows that politically they are no mature. That is true. Number three, 
Then I'm the kind who cannot hold doors to ransom. It's a human being like you and I. Mm. If you dig a hole, you fall into it. You challenge a federal authority, disclaiming that you are not even in Nigeria. You see so many things, and it hurting. That thing would have snowballed into real crisis in the country. You know how many lives were lost as a result of that? Government is weighing the options. So it comes from what? There are some members of the National Assembly are appealing mm -hmm. politically. Politically. Are appealing for the release of Namdi Kanu. Yeah. It's a good step. But beyond that appeal, is in Namdi Kanu remorseful? That is true. If he's giving conditional, the, you know, the last time it happened, mm -hmm. he jumped bail. And that is why he was rearrested and brought back. If he comes back or if he comes out, can you people manage him? That is true. Is he going to live like every other Nigerian? Because, or are you going to idolize him and say, this I prop continue? The last time I heard him, he said the mission of IPOP. He still use the word IPOP. Using that word will put you back in jail. But if you say, look, I renounce IPOP and anything that had to do with IPOP and anyone associated with that, and for one Nigeria, the next day is out of jail. Mm. You don't build on nothing. I don't take Nigerians for granted. So nobody has monopoly of violence. That is why we are an entity. We agree to live together. So on that, I don't support that. Let him renounce everything he has done everything they are said for the interest of nigerians look do you think many people supported what he did go to other places in the know you find so many fantastic people people die in tamari some are muslims they appreciate this country they don't want to even go back and you say they should come back to where mm. can you fund it no, it's something very embarrassing mm. so first the first treatment is he must renounce that or not and put it in writing and the southeast governors must also do the same thing because they are using him as a scapegoat many of them don't even want him and the Kano to come out he threatened most of them if i come out this no that is not about that now federal government is not the problem the judiciary is not the problem it's about the personality and the institutions and the governors if they can put their house in order and Amdi Kano will be released by the federal government me i don't have any objection to but that's the truth Nigeria is too mature for secessional group to spring up. Okay. We will not take that. Nigerians will not fold his hands to take that. Even the restructure we are talking about, some people say uh, one term rotational presidency for six. This is not, it's, we don't need it. All we want, return to the status quo. Let's deploy resources to the local government. I keep saying, me, I'm a fan of that. Mm -hmm. And until I see that happen, I'll continue, continue to mention yeah. it. Well, some people have uh, the belief that Simon Ekwa is also situated there in Helsinki. <laughs> they calling the shots of the most controlling uh, his people in court. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, Simon Ekwa, Simon Ekwa is not giving due prominence now to him. It's not even important. Mm. If the federal government wants Simon Ekwa, what they did to him, they can do the same treatment or go to Simon. They know where he's staying. Mm. Like I said, he start from Namdi Kano. If he can come out to denounce, because, okay, what is the problem in the first place? Is is able to say we are being marginalized now? It's about participatory democracy. Mm. Bring your cards, I bring my card to have the negotiation. When Peter B was campaigning across board, most of the Igbo friends we have hijacked the movement. No, it's not supposed to have been that. All you do is those in the southwest, those in the north will hijack you. Go back, you face the new way. You know, it's just like uh, a story of one of my friends, mm. Macaulay, yes. from one of these families in Kano. He said, This man has four wives. Now, uh, if your wife, if this Madam A give birth to a child after two years, he moves into the next woman's woman, room. Yeah. So it's rotational. So if you give birth, so you hardly know who is your mother from infancy. Mm. That is how it's supposed to be. So when you grow up, auntie, 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 that is what they mention in their so house. We're talking about equality. Equality. Yeah. But at the same time, people have been complaining that they have been 
such change, particularly when you take a, you know, the constitution of states. Yes. Uh, they have only five states. Well, not just the northeast. No, no, sorry. Um, southeast. Southeast. Southeast region. They have mm. five. These are political states. issues. Now there is agitation by over 30 lawmakers led by um, Ikenga Ugochinia mm. for the mm. creation of uh, one additional state. No, it's, um, um, you know, it's you to, it? you know, like I said, it's a problem state creation. Like what is happening, uh, is, is in Macaulay letters, look, I keep saying we know the truth. Some people just want to be relevant by saying I threw up this bill for, you know, self-acclimation and all that. I want to become relevant. The job they are supposed to do in the National Assembly, is that what, the, how many bills have they passed that are relevant? Somebody woke up one day and said we should be singing National Anthem. I think the most important thing, I see tomorrow, if you ask me my second home is Imo State. Mm. Most of my friends are from Imo State. I love them with a passion. But let me tell you, you see, within the Southeast region, there's a need for regional unity. And go around and find out all this thing we are talking about. You can't even mention it before some Ibos. Mm. The, the elites, they, they are more concerned about business and welfare. The Igbo man is very enterprising. He's focused. If you allow him to do his business, if you don't interfere, you don't put, put pressure on him, he doesn't have anything to do with government. That's right. The Igbo man is very enterprising. But in politics, they are not mature in the sense that they are coming to the center. And I like um, somebody here is doing in Imo, Hopo Zatima. He's, he has this nationalistic tendency. Mm. You see the Senate president. Um, uh, Apabio, these are people that are veterans, they are politicians, they are great people, they are changing the narratives, they are telling, look, let's come to the center. Coming to the center means we want to be in the decision making realm. It's not about tribalism, it's not about religion, religion or sentiment. It's about the Nigerian brands. Let's sit on the table. Let's sit on the table. Mm. Come on, I can go to a Bonyi state today and become, build my house as a Nigerian, go to rivers like that. So I should feel free to mingle uh, everywhere. That is what we're talking about. Mm. If we remove this uh, bad naturalization, I say, okay, I'm a Nigerian. Look, I can go to Enugu State and contest for House of Assembly. Most Igbos go to Lagos to contest for House of Assembly. So, you know, naturally, mm. these are the problems we have if we try as much as possible to okay. operate on that Nigerianness. That's the end of the story. Well, that's the end of the story, and that's the size of our package uh, this afternoon. I would like to thank Ibrahim Garba Iceman most profoundly for finding time to come. Whatever he said in the studio, that's his personal opinion. It does not represent the opinion of Captain Television. On that note, on behalf of uh, Ruben Okala, our producer, and the entire team that made this program possible this afternoon, my name is Macaulay Honohashi. Saying bye-bye and see you next time.